Hello, welcome everyone. This is Sarah Carr. I'm coordinator for the Coastal Marine Ecosystem Based Management Tools Network. We'll go ahead and get started with the presentation in just one minute. Okay, Linwood, did you want okay. to? Okay, sure. Huh? Go ahead and turn it on. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining our webinar today with Valia Dracu, who's calling in from Italy. I'm Linwood Pendleton. I'm the director of the Marine Ecosystem Services Partnership, which is an initiative of Duke University's Nicholas Institute for Environmental Policy Solutions, where I'm a senior scholar. Uh, the, the Marine Ecosystem Services Partnership, as you might know, provides uh, economic valuation data about marine ecosystem services and coastal ecosystem services and helps facilitate communications about these marine ecosystem services between scientists and conservation professionals. This webinar uh, is also part of a series that we're doing, which uh, is one of many as uh, part of the Conservation Economics Initiative. This is a joint project between the Nicholas Institute and the Conservation Strategy Fund, through this Conservation Economics Initiative, will be offering hybrid online and in-person courses in conservation economics, uh, really geared towards working environmental professionals who don't have formal training in economic methods or tools. So keep an eye out for that. We have all of our upcoming webinars for the Marine Ecosystem Services Partnership and the Conservation Economics Initiative listed at the Marine Ecosystem Services Partnership webpage. Um, just as a preview, Loretta Burke is going to be speaking uh, in a couple of weeks about World Resource Institute's new valuation handbook for the Caribbean. We have Jeff Atkins from NOAA's uh, email project who's going to talk about what NOAA's doing, uh, providing data on ocean economics. Brian Murray from Duke University is going to talk about the economics of coastal carbon. And uh, we have Jeff Vinson also of Duke lined up who's going to discuss the importance of including economics in conservation impact assessments. Today's webinar, uh, like many of the ones we've done in the past, is joint with the Ecosystem um, Based Management Tools Network, SARA, and also Open Channels. Uh, we're looking forward to um, this kind of collaboration, and you'll uh, should expect more webinars like this. But today, we, we want to turn to Valia, who's going to talk to us about efforts at the European Commission's Joint Research Center to try to create a system to harmonize the way we describe, talk about, and quantify ecosystem services. If you have any questions uh, during the course of the presentation about clarification, type them in to the questions box. When Vali is done, we'll have time, probably 20 to 30 minutes, for questions and answers. So once again, type your questions into the question box that you see there in your GoToWebinar control panel. And I'll uh, moderate those questions and uh, feed them straight to Valia. So without further ado, let's go to our guest, Valia Draku. Thank you very much, Lingut. Uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on your time zone. Um, so I, will, uh, I would like to present you today the work that we've been doing uh, in the JRC, the Joint Research Center of European Commission, on harmonizing ecosystem services for the marine and coastal environment. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, the ABM Tools and Sarah Carr, uh, MESP and Open Channels for hosting us uh, today. Uh, before starting with uh, the presentation, I would just like to um, explain to you that this work uh, has been published um, in 2013 by a, a team of postdoctoral researchers in, the, in our institute. Uh, it's, the title of the publication is uh, Current State, Status and Future Prospects for the Assessment of Marine and Coastal Ecosystem Services, and it's a systematic review. Um, and I would also like to thank uh, the Ecosystem Service Partnership and the Marine Ecosystem Service Partnership, with whom we've been collaborating for this work as well. 
So, um, uh, what have we done in our uh, research? Uh, first of all, I will present you a brief overview of why we want to carry out this uh, review, uh, where were we aiming at, uh, how we approached this, and then I will uh, give some examples of practical applications. So, uh, it is uh, widely known and, known and in, has been stated that the marine and coastal ecosystem services are highly important for, uh, for our uh, well-being and uh, Robert Costanza and Martinez have also stated that uh, marine and coastal ecosystem services are responsible for 60% of the economic values of our biosphere. So, uh, it's widely acceptable and it's beyond question the significance of these ecosystems and the services they provide to the human well-being. On the other hand, the existing assessments compared to those for the terrestrial environment are much less and this is because uh, among others uh, we, there have been many issues in the data quality, the models that have been used to quantify marine and coastal ecosystem services and the methodological approaches for them. So, um, apart from these, uh, in particular, uh, it is also well known that the major uh, ecosystem service classification systems have been based on the terrestrial environment and they have been inspired by it. So, and only a few have been specifically tailored to the marine environment, like the one proposed by Nicolas Beaumont in 2007 and the more recently published one by Anne uh, uh, bonke Henry. Um, uh, in the Journal of Environmental Management. So, this plurality of typologies and classification systems used has caused, uh, is causing inconsistencies in the terminologies and confusion and misinterpretation of results sometimes. Uh, on the other hand, the ecosystem service uh, mapping is much more limited uh, to the marine and coastal environment compared to the terrestrial one and this is due to the complexity of this environment in, in three, -dimensional, uh, three dimensions, the lack of low resolution data and much more. And also there have been a lot of um, the economic valuation of the marine and coastal ecosystem services is also an issue uh, under uh, for which there have uh, not been developed uh, standards have not been developed sorry so what we wanted to do taking all this into account is to assess the current status of the marine and coastal ecosystem services research identify which are the current knowledge gaps and propose ways forward in particular, we wanted to extract uh, information and indicators that have been used to assess the marine and coastal ecosystem services or, and organize them in a systematic way, assess the classification systems that have been used so far for the ecosystem service assessments and tailor them to the marine and coastal environment and propose uh, ways forward, and also uh, identify uh, potential practical applications of this work. So what we did was actually a review of uh, scientific literature, of peer-reviewed liter literature of the marine and coastal ecosystem service assessments, out of which we extracted uh, indicators, terms and classification systems and tried to organize them in a systematic way. We summarized the results and proposed uh, ways forward. So how did we do that? The first step was carrying out the literature review uh, through the Scopus uh, search engine. Uh, we used the, uh, the search terms that we used were ecosystem service or environmental service and marine, sea, ocean and coastal. Out of this search we extracted uh, 563 publications. Um, the search, the cut-off date for our search was 4th April of 2012 um, and then these uh, publications were uh, screened first uh, based on the abstract and then uh, based on the full text reading and full text reading that we carried out. So the final data set that we had to review was 145 publications. Out of these publications we extracted, as I mentioned earlier, indicators on ecosystem services. Uh, the number of indicators extracted uh, from these studies was uh, 476 
and uh, it's important at this stage to mention that we extracted information both uh, based on the studies and uh, on the custom service indicators. On the studies, we extracted information on the year of publication, the perspective of the paper, was it focusing on economic valuations, on ecological modeling, um, quantification or mapping of ecosystem services, what kind of analysis was carried out, which were the major habitats and ecosystems that were analyzed, was the paper only focusing on a, on a marine or coastal environment, was it both terrestrial and marine, was it um, open ocean habitat. Uh, we also estimated the number of ecosystem services assessed, which classification systems have been used, and the affiliation of the first author in order to be able to identify um, the institution uh, in, uh, at which the location of the institution uh, of the study. Regarding the indicators that we extracted, we uh, identified the marine and coastal ecosystem services assessed. Uh, we identified whether the indicator was uh, quantifying or mapping an ecosystem service, uh, which were the major habitats analyzed, what kind of data was used for the indicator, was it based on primary raw data, on proxies, on models, on simple statistics, uh, which indicator was particularly used. Um, was uh, which cascade class? Uh, I will explain later this, but uh, it was actually we tried to identify if the indicator was focusing on measuring stock uh, flow or benefit of ecosystem service to the society, which was the special scale of the indicator and the location of the study. Uh, of course, after extracting all this information, what we had to do is organize it in a systematic way in order to summarize it and get uh, to some assumptions. But this was rather tricky uh, due to many reasons. Uh, here I uh, have a good example of why this was difficult. Uh, this is a, um, a graph which, represents, which shows the classification system of marine and coastal ecosystem services that each study followed uh, during their uh, assessment. And you can see that we have the 68% of the uh, assessed studies for which no uh, classification system was followed. Um, we have a 15% which was based on the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment classification and ecosystem services. Um, only 3% of the assessment used the classification by Beaumont et al, uh, which was the only one specifically focusing on the marine and coastal environment. And 14% of the studies used other kinds of sources. So, given these, uh, as well as other inconsistencies in the terminology of indicators, uh, etc., we tried to come, um, we decided to focus on providing a system which will be able to take, uh, to, it will not be a new system, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, but we wanted to use the existing information, taking into account all the existing, the major classification systems of ecosystem services, and propose a new system that we lacked as an interpreter among the different uh, classification systems. Something like the Babelfish, as uh, very well Nikki Beaumont uh, called it in uh, the Custom Service Partnership Conference two years ago. So, um, the system that we proposed, uh, uh, you can um, I will present you here some very few examples of how it uh, is structured. So we focused on provisioning, uh, regulating and maintenance and cultural services. For each group of services, uh, we identified the major ecosystem services for the marine and coastal environment. And we assess the correspondence with the major classification um, uh, systems on ecosystem services. So for the provisioning services, we identified food provision, water storage and provision, and biotic materials and biofuels as the major ecosystem services. For the regulating and maintenance services, we uh, focus on water purification, air quality regulation, coastal protection, climate regulation, weather regulation, ocean nourishment, life cycle maintenance, and biological regulation. And also, for the cultural services, we focus on symbolic and aesthetic values, recreation and tourism, and cognitive effects. So, 
uh, for each of these services uh, presented in the table before. Uh, we gave clear definitions as well as uh, a specific uh, interpretation of the marine and coastal component. Um, I cannot present them all here, but if you want uh, to have a look at them, you can. Uh, the detailed description is provided in the published uh, paper. Uh, for uh, just a few examples, uh, we defined as food provision, uh, food provision both as fisheries, fishing activities, um, uh, which were reported as total landings or catch per unit effort, and sometimes uh, jobs uh, corresponding to these uh, to fisheries, and also as aquaculture. Uh, as farming of the aquatic organisms, including fish, mollusks, seaweeds, and algae. Uh, we also, for, uh, also, coastal protection was defined as the natural defense of the coastal zone against erosion um, from waves, storms, and sea level rise. And it was mainly focusing on specific habitats like mangroves and other coastal habitats, and which create buffering protective zones. Um, tourism was also uh, one of the major uh, marine and coastal ecosystem services, which was identified as coastal and offshore activities like bathing, uh, sailing, recreational fishing, et fishing, etc. So. Um, uh, once all this information was uh, organized and uh, specific definitions was were given, all the different ecosystem service indicators that were extracted for, from our review were also labeled according to their ability to measure capacity, fl capacity flow or benefit of ecosystem services. Uh, this classification is based on the ecosystem service cascade model, which was proposed by Roy Haynes Young and Marion Potts in 2010. So, um, in this table, uh, you could see the m major trends uh, as occurred from our uh, review. So, um, for both provisioning and cultural services, the majority of indicators that were extracted for our review were measuring the benefit of ecosystem services. Uh, for uh, while well, for maintenance and regulating services, the majority of extracted indicators was focusing on uh, measuring capacity, and only and no indicators were measuring the flow of ecosystem services or the benefit apart from coastal protection. For provisioning and cultural uh, capacity and flow were also identified, but uh, much less compared to the benefit. Um, to give you uh, some examples of the major and the most popular ecosystem service indicators that we identified, um, for the provisioning services, the most uh, commonly assessed indicator was food provision. Um, the most commonly assessed ecosystem services, sorry, was food provision, uh, with different indicators based on its ability to measure capacity flow or benefit. Um, biomass of living marine resources, fish diversity, seafood quality uh, were indicators uh, very popular to measure the capacity. Uh, the flow was measured mainly as fish catches and landings, while uh, the benefit was measured as income for fisher from fisheries, jobs, and dependence on fisheries of the local community. Uh, on the regulating services, uh, uh, the most popular ecosystem service assessed was water purification, and the indicator mainly used was the presence of excess nutrients. Uh, as I mentioned before, the only uh, indicators uh, that were uh, you measuring the benefit of regulating services were those of coastal protection and were measured either as coastal exposure or uh, avoided or replacement costs. Uh, finally, the most popular cultural service was tourism and recreation, which was measured as a benefit for, uh, to society, uh, either as income from tur tourism, uh, perce perception of benefit, willingness of the tourists to pay, presence of a specific marine protected area, um, and marine protected area. Um, apart from that, we also assess the habitats for which uh, most of the indicators were map, were assessed or mapped. Uh, the most popularly assessed habitat for marine and coastal ecosystem services were mangroves and coastal wetlands, uh, with less coral reefs, uh, seagrass meadows, and 
uh, beach and dune systems was the, were the less uh, popular ones and the rest uh, were much less assessed compared to the first ones mentioned. It's uh, remarkable that uh, there is a big, there was a big gap in the open ocean systems which were, uh, for which only 15% of assessments were focusing. Um, also, we assessed, as I mentioned earlier, the geographic distribution of the existing assessments. So, uh, the majority of uh, studies were uh, located in North America uh, with 18%. Uh, Europe and Asia uh, had 13% of the studies. Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific Islands uh, were 8% of the assessments. Uh, the African regions only 4%, while Central and South America 5%. Uh, you can also see from this map that um, North America, Europe, East Asia and Australia are the regions where most of the research is being happening um, uh, is been happening by uh, the res uh, researchers that are actually there, while in Central and South America, Africa, Southeast Asia, most of the research uh, is coming from other regions. From other regions, it is also uh, remarkable uh, that uh, out of the these assessments, only 10% actually was actually mapping ecosystem services while the rest of the assessments was focusing either on economic valuation or socioeconomic uh, assessments. So, um, which are the potential applications of a work like that? Uh, the way we um, organize systematically the marine and harmonize the marine and coastal ecosystem assessment. Uh, on the one hand, gives a broad overview of the existing metrics, indicators, and uh, how they have been used so far. On the other hand, it's a tool that can allow us to identify existing gaps and recommendations for the future, and it could also fac facilitate the dialogue both within the ecosystem service community, but also uh, it could facilitate the, standard, the science policy dialogue uh, if uh, this uh, standardized class classification system and terminology is followed. Uh, these could have potential implications for the for conservation marine and coastal zone management as it has very it has been uh, shown very well in the work carried out by Vonke Hendricks et al. Um, and it could also facilitate the interoperability among the existing information systems for ecosystem services. This last point is the one that we have actually been working on um, the last months and um, uh, I don't, I'm not able to see the slide very well, I don't know if you can see it, but I can say it. Um, so what this slide was supposed to show was uh, a screenshot of the Marine Ecosystem Service Partnership Database and the Ecosystem Service Partnership Database. Both these are um, online tools, web catalogs of assessments of uh, ecosystem services. Uh, the Marine Ecosystem Service Partnership uh, Database focuses, of course, on the marine and coastal habitats and economic valuation in them, while the Ecosystem Service Partnership Visualization Tool uh, focuses on providing a catalog of existing assessments of um, ecosystem services uh, of focusing only on maps. So what we try to do uh, with our colleagues from the Duke University, uh, from Nicholas Institute and Nicholas School, we try to, um, we're working on making these two systems interoperable and we try to find a common denominator among the two databases that will be able to provide a link among the, uh, among the two. Uh, however, given the inconsistency uh, in the terminologies um, and the classification systems used, this was not possible. Uh, so we could not focus on using as a common denominator the ecosystem services, but we focus on other kind of more standardized uh, entities like um, like exclusive economic zones or geographical region boundaries, etc. Uh, however. Having a, a system like the one we provide standardized, um, it could provide a much better link among these two systems. So this is a 
specific application of this uh, work. Uh, to close with, uh, based on our experience so far with this work uh, and the outputs of the review, we, um, we suggest some recommendations for the future. So, um, one thing that should definitely be done was the improvement of mapping methodologies and data quality for the marine and coastal environment and provision of higher resolution data. Um, more ecosystem services other than fisheries, tourism, and uh, other uh, should be quantified and assessed for the marine and coastal environment. Uh, there is also a big gap. There are regions for which no assessments or maps have been provided, and a greater focus should be uh, directed towards these regions. Uh, also, there is a big need for more deep sea assessments on ecosystem services. And something that we didn't do in our review was a thematic review of the marine and coastal ecosystem service literature. Because in our uh, work, we focused on the studies that state uh, that refer to ecosystem services as a concept. And we did not take into account uh, specifically, for example, fisheries and try to extract all the information on studies on fisheries. So um, thematic reviews based on the major ecosystem, marine and coastal ecosystem service pro services provided should be also carried out in the near future. So that's it from me. I would like to thank you. This is the team that carried out the research. And if you want to contact me uh, or the authors of this paper, this is the email and the websites where you can access our databases. Thank you very much. Thank you, Valia. Uh, we already have a couple of questions. I encourage um, other people to start sending in questions now. While they do, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. You talked about 476 indicators. How many different ecosystem services classifications did you come across? Um, the major, well, we, the major, uh, as I already showed in the graph, uh, the major ecosystem service classification followed was uh, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment one. Uh, there were also a few focusing on the, uh, using the classification by Nicolas Beaumont et al. No, so what I'm, what I'm wondering is just how many different different um, types, for instance, in a typology, did you see? Did you see people, uh, for instance, the, the Ecosystem Services Partnership um, Ecosystem Values Database originally had 76 different classifications for ecosystem services. I'm just wondering how many different ways people may have been calling the same set of ecosystem services. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not able to give you a number right now because we, uh, we tried to, when we extracted the information, uh, we focused on some major uh, classification systems and all the, uh, all the classifications that did not belong to them, we just classified them as other. So I, can, I have to go through the database to check again uh, the different ones. And, and when you see these um, major classification systems like the MEA come out or mm -hmm. Nikki Beaumont's um, classification system, did you see in the literature a uh, swing where then everyone started using a new classification? Or do you find now that it really is a, a, a mix, even of papers that are coming out in 2013? of the MEA and T and Nikki's paper, and now maybe we'll see some from Anne and Bunky Hendrick's paper. Uh, I cannot hear you very well. I will reply, but I'm not sure I heard everything. So um, most of the classification of the studies that we reviewed, uh, of course, we saw that um, after the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment Classification System was proposed, there were more uh, studies following this classification. Uh, the one by Beaumont et al. was also uh, ref uh, referred to and followed by some assessments, but it's also true that especially in the marine and coastal environment when people were assessing ecosystem services, uh, they were always, they were mo in most cases suggesting an adjusted classification, an adjusted onomatology terminology of the existing system. So uh, till the most recent publications, this has not, there has not been a clear standard. Uh, 
um, the publication, our publication, what we propose, and also the one by Anne Bonke Hendricks uh, are rather new. So I think the time will show if they're applicable and if people could follow them. But I mean, this is why they're out there. So I hope they will uh, help uh, to provide standards. I don't know if I replied to your question. No, that, that was excellent. D did you include any sort of energy production? Sorry, I cannot hear you. <laughs> Any sort of energy production? Energy? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we identified some studies which focus on energy production. Um, yeah, I think we did. Okay. And, and um, Catherine Short asks whether uh, industry, the marine industry, has participated in your work or shown interest in using this kind of harmonization. Uh, to my current knowledge, no. I know that uh, this work has been used, uh, as a, especially the list of indicators and definition of uh, marine and coastal ecosystem services, has been used uh, by the European uh, by European project called MICE, Mapping and Assessments of Ecosystems and Their Services, focusing on European of, of um, EU member states, and they have been using this as a guidance. Uh, for their mapping and assessments, but uh, beyond that, I'm not aware of any industry uses of such a, an approach. But the idea is to make it also uh, useful for them because, I mean, uh, the definitions and the classes we provide are relatively broad, so and in order to make it more easy for everyone to be able to understand and use it. Okay. Did you have a tool that you use for mapping these ecosystem services, or have you created your own? Uh, by mapping, you mean? So one of the um, the guests asks if if you've mapped these ecosystem services out, um, maybe by EEZ, and if you did, did you use a particular tool, or did this did you do this? Uh, no. I mean, what, what we did is we produced a map where we, uh, the one that I showed in my presentations, where we uh, showed the distribution of these ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. uh, the reference, uh, we didn't map them by EZ, but we focused on the goal, the global administrative units and layers to group them, let's say, geographically, and everything else was produced by us. We didn't use any existing tool. Okay. Now, the, the U.S. EPA has a new system called the Final Ecosystem Services Classification System. Mm -hmm. Mark Russell asks if, if you've had a look at that and uh, have you considered trying to bring that into the harmonization process? Uh, we had, a, I mean, I, I we had a look at these uh, some time ago, but uh, when we um, when we carried out this research, we did not focus on that because we all the research we focused on was peer-reviewed, so mainly scientific community research, and we did not use this kind of uh, tool. Okay. But it's a very good suggestion, so we will consider it okay. for future. Uh, Carolina uh, Colaro asks um, about the, the landscape is not all ecosystem services. How were you able to distinguish services from habitat and then uh, did you try to look at quality of ecosystems or ecosystem services in your analysis? Yeah, um, well, to, we first of all uh, identified as ecosystem services uh, only uh, what the authors of the, each publication that we reviewed has been named as such. So, and this is, uh, this was the last point I also made in my uh, recommendation that we didn't do a thematic review where we focused on uh, specific habitats or different ser or ecosystem services. We only considered what each author has been calling an ecosystem service and an ecosystem service indicator. And this was also interesting for us to see the difference at the level of assessments while some people uh, call ecosystem services uh, simply the presence of a specific habitat while others uh, use complex models to assess the services. But this is something that we haven't, uh, what she has is not something that we have done, something that we understand that there is a big need to be done, and we hope to do it in the future. 
Okay. And you used um, Roy and Marion's cascade with the capacity flow and benefit. Did mm -hmm. you consider or try any other uh, models, for instance, the Boyd and Bansaf model that looks at ecological mm -hmm. outcomes through mm -hmm. value? Did you, did you do that or did you even just stick with the... No, I mean, we had uh, different discussions within the group uh, about which one to follow, but we thought of focusing on the cascade model uh, as it was, uh, for us, it was much clearer and easier to deal with and also to capture the information we wanted. Okay. We have a couple of people that want you to put um, the paper citation up while we talk about this. Uh -huh, okay. I can do that. Uh, as you move as you move forward, do you, do you see particularly within the, the EC um, different policy sectors who are ready to use what you've done? For instance, uh, Catherine Short asks about sustainable seafood. Um, has anyone else in the EC reached out to you to start using this new harmonization? Um, f till now, uh, the people that have been using our work, at least, uh, I mean, from what I'm aware of, are people uh, in the in DG and the Director General for the Environment, uh, who are those focusing on the mapping and assessment of ecosystem services. Uh, beyond that, I don't know if this has uh, been used for the, from the rest of the people, but uh, for us, the, um, the way that this has been used now by the by DGN and the mapping and the MIAS project, the Mapping and Assessment Ecosystem Service project, is the first test to see how applicable it is, and it's also interesting to see how researchers and policymakers sit on the same table, also with representatives from each member state, a member state of the European Union, and try to understand the information that we provide and uh, use it to generate outcomes. So I suppose that once this first uh, te uh, test uh, passes, then we can move uh, towards new uh, end users, let's say. Okay. And Damiano Scarcella asks specifically about marine spatial planning in the Mediterranean, but I, I think elsewhere in the European Union. Have you thought about what the next steps would be in order to use your harmonization to help incorporate marine ecosystem services into marine spatial plans? Uh, well, we have not considered this work in the presented uh, paper. Uh, but it's something that, uh, I mean, part of the team uh, that has been uh, part of the co-authors of this paper, like uh, Chiara Pirodi, Stelios Katsanevaki, Simon Sharev, there are people who have been working a lot on marine special planning in the Mediterranean. So, I mean, I'm not the right person to answer this, but I think uh, they have been considering, because my uh, focus area is not Mediterranean, so I suppose they have been considering this work in their approaches. Okay. One of the, the important uses of the harmonization I didn't mention is that um, lack of harmonization has made it very difficult to either do meta-analyses across all of these valuation papers or it also makes it difficult sometimes to do analysis of the impact of policies on ecosystem services. Uh, do you know how we can do a better job of using this harmonization, either to go back and try to reclassify the papers that have already been done, or moving forward, uh, is the EC thinking about any ways that they can improve the way people categorize and classify ecosystem services in the future so we can use this information better? Um, yeah, I mean, well, this is not something that I could uh, reply uh, with uh, certainty, as I mean, I'm, I'm not representing the whole European Commission mm -hmm. here, but... Um, Did you make any recommendations about that? Well, uh, we did, but the point is that uh, there are different kinds of approaches in these. I mean. 
because I, I believe that we have um, having a, a harmonized classification, a standardized classification system is something that is rather necessary and it's a good way, it's a good tool to frame everybody's research in something that is easily understood by everyone. But on the other hand, it's not, uh, we cannot have a one solution fix all. So when we want to go into different levels of assessments, people should be able uh, to tailor uh, the, an ex a classification system like the one that we propose into this particular needs of their assessments. So, uh, in order to make it a standard that would be widely used, I believe that it has to undergo different tests at different special scales, uh, focusing on different uh, kinds of assessments, uh, uh, economic valuations, mapping, modeling, quantification of ecosystem services. And then we can say that, okay, this is a standard that should be published and used as, as an ontology and used as a system that will be used by member states, uh, etc. But I think it's a bit early for that. Okay. Now, you extracted 476 indicators from 145 publications. Uh, Stace Bodio wants to know whether you did this manually or did you use any uh, sort of natural language processing software? Uh, no, we, we did it, uh, I mean the search was done in Scopus using the terms that I presented before and then we, the extraction of indicators was done manually. But we were seven people so we distributed, uh, we read all publications and we extracted indicators uh, one by one. You know, having done this harmonization, uh, Mohammed Kadi asks whether you were able to see any ways that we can start to integrate weather and climate issues into um, ecosystem services better using this harmonization. Uh, there have been uh, a few um, references to on some indicators that we extracted on climate regulation, for example, and weather regulation. So some there has been we we came across assessments like that. Uh, whether these could be specifically tailored uh, to um, to climate uh, change assessments, uh, it's something that. Uh, I think it's still an, I mean it's under question because as I said also before uh, to the question of Catherine Short, uh, this was not a thematic review, it was a more global one. So if we want to specifically check uh, the indicators and the classification systems that can be used for a specific category of ecosystem services, I think that this should be done on a different, uh, using a different methodology, different keywords for the search of the existing indicators, and then see how it matches to, the, to that one, which is more broad. That's right. Now, did you think at all about um, the fact that so much of the evaluation work that's being done now never makes it into the literature. Did, were you able to, does Scopus look at the gray literature or is it all the published literature? No, it was not, yeah, this was one of, also one of the major points of discussion we had while we were brainstorming on how to structure the work and what to include in the review. Uh, we, could, we did not include gray literature due to the, I mean, uh, to the amount of it and also due to the difficulty, I mean, it was difficult to standardize information among peer-reviewed publications. It would be even more difficult, I think, to do this for great literature. It was something that we thought of doing, especially since we have access to many reports here, uh, but we didn't, we didn't do that. Okay. Uh, Natalie. Abram asks if you had any ASFA partners, and if you know what ASFA is, let us know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is either, so Natalie, if you write back. So I, the answer is probably no. Yes. <laughs> if you write back and tell us what that is, um, that would be useful. Now, you know, one of the things that Anne points out in her recent PLOS One paper is the difficulty of putting ecosystem services in categories so there's not double counting. Yep, exactly. You know, and, and particularly, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes you see the same ecosystem service listed a couple of different times because sometimes it's an intermediate service and sometimes mm -hmm. it's a final service. 
but then you also have many, many evaluation studies that mm -hmm. value an activity that incorporates uh, a number of different ecosystem services at once. So you might be you know, looking at boating, recreational fishing, and bird mm -hmm. watching all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Was that a, a big problem for you, or is that something that you dealt with? Uh, it was something that we definitely came across with, and uh, what we did is that we um, uh, we 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 counted it. I mean, if a service was um, uh, we focused on what the authors identified as a service, and if the authors were double counting, we didn't let's say we didn't play with uh, their data. We kept it as it was. So one author was uh, focusing. Uh, on bird uh, watching and then uh, he was uh, double counting it with something else so then we were keeping it uh, we were counting we double, we double counted it as well yeah that's something you know at the marine ecosystem services partnership that we encountered very early on and it's mm -hmm. what led us to not try to um, classify all of the studies in that database by marine ecosystem services, mm -hmm. just stick with ecosystems, but even ecosystems uh, mm -hmm. you face the same problem. It's like how do you disentangle mangroves from seagrasses from corals kind of thing. Definitely. Uh, Natalie writes back and says that uh, the AS, FA is the aquatic science and fisheries abstracts from the FAO. Uh -huh. okay. So I'm guessing you didn't, you didn't look at that, but it, it seems to me that, that if we could somehow harness these um, natural language software like Stace mm -hmm. was talking about and then really tap into these huge PDF libraries that mm -hmm. the JRC has and the Marine mm -hmm. Ecosystem Services Partnership has put together with these mm -hmm. abstracts. Uh, we could do this harmonization, kind of bump it up to the next level and really expand uh, yeah. the, the database of studies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a great idea. Okay. Well, terrific. I don't have any more questions for you. Can you tell me? Actually, okay. I, do have, I do have one more question for you. So what, what's next yes. for your research team um, with respect to this harmonization or a advancing the, the mapping work that you're doing um, with mm -hmm. the Ecosystem Services Partnership? So uh, regarding this uh, harmonization, uh, I mean, right now we're, uh, as I said, already uh, it's been already used by some people within the Institute for the mapping and assessment of ecosystem services so we're just uh, in a state of waiting uh, for these to see if it needs to be adjusted modified uh, which are the um, positive and negative uh, things about it um, in regarding the, it's also something that, I mean, it has been, it's, just, its outcomes have been used to populate the Marine Ecosystem Services uh, Partnership Database and um, also uh, on the, it's going to populate the Ecosystem Service Partnership Visualization Tool which focuses though only on mapping, uh, which was only a 10% of the um, extracted uh, uh, indicators, but still it's something that will populate our database. Uh, the next step is to use uh, this information uh, in order to make uh, uh, also the two systems, the Marine Ecosystem Service Partnership Database and the Ecosystem Service Partnership Visualization Tool interoperable and to make sure that these two will exchange information and will be, the users will be able to navigate from one system to the other. Okay. We, we have a, a, a late but a very interesting question from Elena Gysi. She noted the, your point about the fact that uh, a lot of the studies didn't map ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. She was wondering uh, why, uh, or were you able to tell why? Was it to the lack of robustness or, or what? Well, I think there are <coughs> different reasons. I mean, we didn't uh, try to identify uh, during the review why. The, uh, I mean, we did not address this explicitly, but uh, the assumptions we made based on the results, I mean, there have been different reasons uh, for which this uh, happened. I think a major one has to do with the quality of the data and the resolution of the available data. Uh, for example, 
the the data that we use now for the research we're doing in the in the project I'm working on now, uh, the maximum, the highest resolution we can have for uh, primary production in the ocean is four kilometers, uh, while in the land this is uh, something that you, uh, someone would never use. Um, and on the other hand, apart from the data quality, um, we have some uh, some difficulty in. Um, incorporating the three-dimensional uh, nature of the ocean in the, in the assessments. Uh, and if this is not mapped, I mean, we cannot uh, move further. Uh, we also have, um, in many cases, uh, in some, especially in some regions, um, both, there, there is no special information for the, I mean, maybe it's a very bad quality, but uh, especially in some regions in Africa, for example, there is no, some uh, uh, ecosystems have not been mapped at all, so, or they're mapped at a global scale, which is an oversimplification of the assessments. Um, and nothing else comes up <laughs> right now, well, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I think there's some fundamental questions here too, which is that mm -hmm. on, on land, m mm -hmm. most ecosystems are relatively stationary. But yeah, exactly. In the sea, there are entire ecosystems that move around. Uh, yeah, so the Sargassa Sea ecosystem is a good example of one that's mm -hmm. not stationary. But then, of course, organisms swim around and move. Mm -hmm. And people may experience the same uh, ecosystem outcome, say a whale. Yeah. Lots of different places. So people will exactly. see, see a whale in, in New England and then see the same whale in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, particularly with um, extracted ecosystem services like fish, uh, mm -hmm. they uh, generate ecosystem services um, in a value added sort of way uh, at very different steps in the value chain. So mm -hmm. I, I think that. The, we have this tendency to really want to be able to map ecosystem service. A lot of times what we end up is mapping ecosystems exactly. and not services. And I, I think, you know, I know there are a number of people out there. Um, the Marine Geospatial Ecology Lab has thought seriously about this. Um, I've thought about this. It, we're going to have to create new ways of thinking about ecosystem services mm -hmm. uh, that are different than the way we map and um, catalog terrestrial ecosystems. So Definitely. That's going to be a big challenge. Okay. okay. Well, okay. that's the last of our questions. Thank you, Valia. That was terrific. And thank you. Thank everyone. you very much. Uh, and uh, sorry if you had uh, some static on your end from me, but we'll try to get <laughs> taken care of next time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye.